we have the opportunity to invite uh, Mr. Anirvan Ghosh, Chief Sustainability Officer of Mahindra Group. Uh, sir is leading this organization for decades now, and his role involves leading the strategy and implementation of uh, 194 uh, $19 billion dollar Mahindra Group uh, Group sustainability initiatives. Sir uh, spoke, presented, and represented India in many national, international, global platforms. I think there is no platform left for Sir to speak. If I continue uh, reading his uh, CV, I think uh, it will take another 20 minutes for, of mine to completely present his entire profile. I'll request Anirban Sir to kindly enlighten us from the Mahindra's perspective or also your experience on the topic. Then we move to the next session. Thank you for uh, having me in this uh, conversation, Akram. Uh, thank you also for not reading the rest of the resume. It would add no value to this conversation. But perhaps the biggest amount of gratitude I must uh, express is for giving me the opportunity to listen to the speakers on the subject today. Because as you saw from the conversation that we've had so far, uh, the subject has been very well discussed. The opportunities have been put forward. Also issues that we may face in the, uh, in the, in the effort to implement EPR has been very uh, well discussed. In the Mahindra group, we've always believed that climate change is this century's biggest business opportunity. And when you heard presentations from Ramki and Dabur and, you know, gave awards to people in the circular economy ecosystem, this came through very, very clearly about how a lot of value can be created uh, through the process of circular economy in general and plastics in particular. How much value is a question that we haven't talked about yet. There was a report that came out in 2016, and that report said that the potential of value creation in India through circular economy is in excess of $624 billion. I suspect that is an underestimate, because as we heard during today's conversation, this, is only, this sector is only going to grow because India is going to develop a lot more and the opportunity for circular economy, especially for repurposing waste material, is going to keep on growing exponentially for at least 30, 40 more years. The report also went on to say that the circular economy sector would create in excess of 15 million jobs. And as you can see from the folks who are participating in this conference, and also all the startups that are in the circular economy space, the potential for uh, employment generation is very, very high. Circular economy practices, EPRs, you know, work in plastics, they do have a contribution in emission reduction. And it is expected that by 2030, 2035, as much as 23% of our emissions could be abated using circular economy practices simply because we will need lesser virgin material. But circular economy actually triggers an, a very interesting uh, design paradigm where designers who start looking for uh, not only how to design with lesser material, but to design with materials which are more climate friendly. This is a conversation I've had on many platforms and even suggested it uh, to people at the Niti Ayo that either we need a new organization or we need to evolve our pollution control boards into something like a circular economy promotion board where the focus is not only on pollution prevention, but on creation of value from what we call waste today, but can be regarded as byproducts or even, you know, sources of uh, 
of uh, new sources of material for businesses which they haven't looked at before. So to my mind, um, the, e the evolution of the EPR, which was also discussed earlier about how new things have come into the EPR at different stages, and I, I'm sure the EPR will evolve even more, is an enabler towards the creation of a circular economy system, uh, which is a step forward from that of a pollution control system. So let me close by congratulating all the winners. Uh, let me close by looking forward to a, a more vibrant circular economy ecosystem. I hope all of us discover business opportunities in the growing circular economy ecosystem, just as our group has invested in uh, waste to energy projects and automobile recycling businesses and so on. I'm sure you will also find places to contribute in helping the nation realize those $624 billion of incremental value and creating the 15 million jobs and impacting the 23 odd percent of emissions that circular economy can help implement. So thank you once again for having me. And it was a pleasure listening to all the conversations that have happened so far.